Welcome back to beautiful downtown Hudson, Massachusetts at Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. Today's episode is one that's kind of near and dear to my heart. It's one of my favorite ingredients, and that's bacon. So bacon is one of these ingredients that has totally seen a fad, and it's become one of these crazy ingredients that gets used, I hate to say a little bit too much, but I thought I would kind of break it down and make six relatively simple, really, really flavorful dishes using bacon today. So I've got some bacon here in front of me, but I want to talk about bacon a little bit before we get going. So a lot of people have heard about Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon is not this. And pancetta is another kind of bacon that's made from the same stuff. But this is actually the belly of a pig. It's pork belly. And it has these beautiful lines of fat and these beautiful lines of lean in there. If you think about Canadian bacon, it's usually round like that. And what that is, that's actually a whole pork loin. It's a muscle that's like this big that you'd make roast pork out of that they take and they cure and they smoke. So pancetta is the same stuff. It's pork belly that's just wrapped up. And they would take these pieces and wrap them and then cure that. But that's not smoked. So what we're talking about here is salty and smoky and fatty goodness. So we're gonna, like I said, we're going to make six different things today. We are going to make a bacon and onion jam. It's going to be really sweet, a little bit salty, and have some great texture. We are going to use this salt here and make bacon salt. It's a great way to use leftover bacon fat or even just like some crumblies that are left over. We're going to make some popcorn flavored with bacon. We'll actually cook it in the bacon fat, season it with a little bit instead of butter and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. We are going to make a bacon peanut brittle, more or less, using these peanuts. And we're going to make a bacon butter. Arthur's going to be very excited about what's going to happen today. So I'm going to start out by taking this bacon here that I've cut up a bit. And I have a pan over here that's just barely warm. I'm just going to put it in there. And what I want to do is I want to render this bacon. You've heard me use that word before, render. And that's taking the fat that's solid here and turning it into a liquid. Our bacon's going to get nice and crispy for that. We're going to use that for our bacon popcorn. We're going to use it also in one of our other dishes. Here, we're going to start making our jam. So a little trick I want to show you is that if you freeze your bacon, it'll cut much easier. So I have bacon that's already partially frozen here. And I'm going to take for our jam, I want it in little cubes. So this is a thick cut sliced bacon. I'm going to cut right along the slices like this. Oh, this is beautiful. It smells nice and smoky. Then I'm going to cut and cut perpendicular to that to make little cubes. So I have about half a pound of bacon here. This is going to make a pretty good amount of jam. I figure uh, the people around here at Hudson Appliance will like to use this on their whatever they decide to use it on for the next few days. All right. So I'm going to turn our heat up a little bit on this. And you can already hear over here, we're starting to sizzle just a little bit. And that's the beauty of these induction stoves is it heats up so, so quickly. We do have another dish that we're going to use some bacon. Because bacon is still a raw meat, it's been cured and smoked, and that's a preser preservation method. But I'm actually going to try to get all my bacon cut now so I don't have to contaminate anything with raw bacon again. So we're going to slice this guy. So at this stage, we've made these little sticks of bacon. Just these tiny little sticks. And these are called batonets. But they're awesome. You cook those up like that and throw them on a salad. I'm going to take a quick break, clean up my mess, make sure we're clean and sanitary. We'll get back to rendering our bacon and making our jam. So I've had a chance to clean up my cutting board here. Both of our bacons are rendering. Over here, these kind of larger pieces are slowly cooking. You can see, look at all the fat in the bottom of that pan. That's actually a good thing. We're going to use a lot of that fat, not quite all of it. We want to let this go a while longer and get crispy. Everything here is going to get ground up real fine. That's why I cut it in kind of big pieces. Now, if we look over at this pan, same thing's going on, but our bacon's a little smaller. You can see that. Our pan is browning a little bit on the bottom, and that's okay. I just don't want it to get black. Once it starts to get black, it gets real bitter. But I want to keep moving it around and letting it cook. Looks, it smells great in here. 
it absolutely smells wonderful. All right, so one of the things we're going to do is bacon wrapped pineapple. Really simple dish, a little bit, a uh, little bit different than you know people do bacon wrapped scallops all the time, and those are awesome. This is a little more uh, frugal thing, but I, I also love the acidity of the pineapple. Works really, really well with the fattiness and the saltiness of the bacon. So I cut the top and bottom off the pineapple. What I'm going to do now is go around and peel it. I'm just going to use my knife and cut right around. And you can see these little eyes in the pineapple, like here and here. You can go back and just snip those off. Beautiful. So now at this point, I'm going to take the pineapple, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to remove these out of the way actually. And I'm going to cut it right in half, right through the core. And then once I get it through the core, you can see the core sitting there. That's not as tender as the rest of it. That's actually my favorite part of the pineapple to eat. But uh, it doesn't have the same texture, so we want to get that out. I'm going to cut a V into the pineapple. And I always use my thumb as a guide, just with the tip of my knife, then like this. And then, you cut a little hole in the pineapple and the core comes out. Let's see how sweet this guy is. That's pretty good pineapple. Not as good as in Hawaii, but it's an acceptable substitute. As I'm standing here, I can smell our bacon. I want to come over and take a look at it. So here I can see a little smoke coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and shut our heat right off on this guy. But this is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. See the nice brown, the nice color on the bacon. Even though it's a little bit hot, it'll sit here and it's actually going to fry in its own fat for just a moment. This other pot here is looking good. Not quite where we want it yet, which is okay. If you take it off the heat for a moment, some of the bubbles will subside a little bit and you can get a good look at it. You want to be careful if it starts to smoke a little bit though. In the beginning you'll see a lot of steam coming off, but eventually once a lot of that water cooks off, it'll turn to smoke and your fat will start to get burnt and it'll have a bit of a bitter taste. All right, so I'm going to cut the core out of this other part of the pineapple here real quick. Now this, you can do whatever you want with this, but I like to make these kind of in sticks. So I'm going to take the pineapple and I'm going to use my knife and go right through like this. Then I get like a plank of pineapple and from there I can cut it into a little strip. This part's a little thin, I'll have to eat that one. And like that. And then from there, I'm going to cut them so that they're about an inch or so. So we're going to end up with pieces of look like that. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of this. You want to try to keep them all about the same size so they take about the same amount of time to cook. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to stick our cut pineapple in this bowl for now. We'll get back to this in a few moments. Now we're going to come back over here. So this bacon is nice and brown. Really, really nice color on there. At this point, I'm going to remove the bacon, but leave the fat. So I have a slotted spoon here. Move my tongs out of the way. I'm going to turn our heat all the way down on this guy. So this bacon is going to end up going back in the jam, but it's not going to be in there right yet. And I'm not worried about letting it drain super well, it's fine. There's actually a little bit, maybe a little bit more fat than I want in this pan. That looks great. But you can see there's a good amount of fat in here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to pour some of this fat into this pan right here. Just like so. <clears throat> because it doesn't matter. We're going to use some of this fat or not use it, but that's kind of a repository for bacon fat at this point. This pan's going to sit warm for a moment while I dice a couple onions. So 
the onions are really important in this jam. They give, they're going to give it a lot of its texture. They're going to give it some sweetness too because we're actually going to let these brown a bit and caramelize, which is going to be great. So this jam we're making here, you could use it kind of how you'd use any sort of a, a jam. So you could make a sandwich with it, but it's fantastic with, we're just going to have it on some rolls today, but with some brie cheese or a real soft cheese or hard, any kind of cheese really. But it would, it's a great topping on a burger. But we're going to go ahead and peel these onions. Get that first layer of skin off of them. There we go. And we want to dice these so that they're relatively fine. Think about the size that we cut our bacon. The size we cut our bacon is about the same size we want our onion to end up being. So that we're real consistent in the final texture of our finished product. So this one has a little rotten spot on there, on the onion. So cut the rotten spot off, but don't get rid of the whole onion. The rest of this onion is perfectly fine. We waste an awful lot of food by thinking the whole thing's bad if only one little spot is. Like you've seen me do before, we're going to use Mother Nature to our advantage. We've got the shape of the onion in all of its layers. I'm going to take and we're going to cut the little cuts watching that the tip of my knife doesn't go through the end of the onion. Now, after you've done it a while, you can get a little more, a little quick with it. I usually put the knife right against my finger. That's because I feel very comfortable doing that. I don't have my finger sticking out like that. A finger sticking out like that is just asking to get snipped. But if you keep it like that and the knife actually hits your knuckle, you won't cut yourself. At least not doing this. I haven't cut myself cutting like this in probably 20 years. I cut myself doing other stupid stuff, but... All right, and then we'll get this guy. So this recipe calls for about 12 ounces of bacon and two onions. These onions are a little small, so I'm going to use two and a half. But like just about all the stuff I cook, Make it, make it yours. If you don't like bacon and onions, this probably isn't the recipe for you to make. But if you like more onions or less onions, or you want to substitute some shallots in there, or you happen to have a different kind of onion, go ahead and throw those in there. We're going to use a little bit of maple syrup to sweeten it. It doesn't have to be maple. We're using real maple. You can use the fake stuff if you want. So now, I'm going to grab our pan here that still has some bacon fat in the bottom of it. The pan's still warm. I'm going to add our onions. Now at this point I'm going to turn the heat up quite a bit and we're going to let these sweat. We want to see these go from this kind of white color to start to turn a little bit translucent. So we're going to take a quick break while we do that. I'm going to clean up a bit of my mess then we'll make the next step with our jam and we'll get going on some bacon popcorn. All right, so I clean up my mess a little bit. These onions here are starting to get nice and soft. They smell great. Still need to go a little bit longer, but you can see all the brown stuff that was on the bottom of the pan, a lot of that's being released back into the onions. The onions have a lot of moisture that's kind of cooking down into this pan. We want to let that keep going. So if we look over here, this bacon is crazy crunchy. You can probably even hear it as it drops in there. This is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to pull off a good amount of this bacon. I'm going to try to get all the big pieces out. I'm not worried about any little pieces. And another thing I noticed is, you know, depending on the bacon that you buy, remember in the very beginning I was showing you the lean parts and the fatty parts? If there's more fatty parts, you're going to end up with more liquid fat in your pan. And we have more fat than I want in this pan. So we've removed the bacon. I'm going to remove a little bit of the fat out of it. And this has a multitude of uses. But that's a little bit more. That's a bulkhead. What we're looking for is about two tablespoons or so. And so here, we're going to cook our popcorn. So I'm going to get the heat pretty hot on there. Let that warm up for just a minute. And here I have some just basic popcorn. It's really fresh. I just opened the bag about 10 minutes ago. If you have popcorn that you bought from the Boy Scout Fun Drive four years ago, 
It'll still work, but it's not gonna be as crunchy. It's still, it's gonna be a little soft when you go to cook it and not as many of the kernels are gonna pop. So try to make sure you use it, store it, wrap it really tight. But I think we're good here. So I'm gonna put in just enough to just barely coat the bottom of the pan. So we're talking a couple tablespoons. And that might actually be too much. But now instead of using butter, instead of using oil or some stuff you bought at the supermarket with the butter flavor, we're using our bacon fat. It's gonna lend some bacon flavor to our popcorn. If you remember what I said earlier about the moisture in the bacon cooking out, the only thing in here is fat, there's no water. I don't know about you, but growing up, I always loved having butter on my popcorn. So I would pop some popcorn in my little air popper and then pour butter on there. But when you melt butter, it has a lot of water in there and you notice that the popcorn gets all soggy. So like at the movie theater, that's just pure, I mean, it's pure fat, it's only fat which is gross, but it's a good thing because it doesn't make the popcorn all soggy. So that's what we're gonna do here, is this bacon fat's gonna be our fat. We wanna go ahead and cover this. We're just gonna listen for it to start to pop. All right, this is looking perfect. So one of the easiest things we're going to make today is going to be this bacon butter. One of the things we're gonna do with the bacon butter is take some bacon, this very crispy bacon, and chop it up. Not that you ever have a problem with leftover bacon, but if you happen to have leftover bacon and didn't know what to do with it, you could certainly do this with it. We're gonna go through, give it a rough chop, go back the other way. So that's about a tablespoon and a half or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in with our butter. If you've ever seen bacon fat, after you leave it out for a while, it gets solid, similar to butter. So this will actually make our butter a little softer, a little bit more spreadable by adding a little bit. We don't wanna to add too much because you don't wanna literally just spread bacon fat over your stuff. But we're gonna leave this here for just a moment because I can hear popcorn. Popcorn is one of these things you wanna be careful with because if you put too much in, if I put all that popcorn, it will literally overflow and go everywhere. So as we kinda, it smells, oh it smells like bacon, it smells awesome. I'm gonna turn our heat down just a little bit. You don't want it too, too high. Perfect. We're gonna go back to our jam real quick. It's time to add our other ingredients. So, to this jam, we have our nice soft onions. We're going to go ahead and add about two ounces of real maple syrup, which is gonna give a lot of sweetness. Maybe a little bit more than two ounces. And actually, I can hear that. That looks pretty good. We're about done popping. Whoop. Good. I'm gonna get it off the heat. I want to give it a shake. This is a nice heavy gauge pan and I don't want it to burn on the bottom. That's great. So it already has some nice bacon flavor. At this point, I don't want to keep the lid on it. You can see all the moisture there on the lid. We don't want that to drip back into the popcorn. The popcorn actually, believe it or not, even though it seems totally dry, is loaded with moisture. That's what allows it to pop. All right, let's go back to our jam real quick. So we've got our syrup in there. We're going to add some vinegar, which is gonna give us some nice acidity. I'm gonna add about three ounces of, that cider vinegar. I'm gonna add a generous pinch of salt, but I, you don't wanna to go too crazy with the salt, because remember the bacon's very salty. And some fresh ground black pepper. Beautiful. And we're gonna add just a few leaves of thyme. Great. We're gonna take another quick break, and get reorganized here. I wanna take this and put it in another container. We'll get ready to get started on our last couple dishes. It's almost time to get Arthur up here and see what he thinks. Our jam's looking great here. So what we want is we want a lot of this moisture to evaporate, we want it to get thick, so it's like a jam-like consistency. I turned our heat down a little bit just because I want to be careful we don't let it burn. So over here, 
popcorn's all gone, we're gonna start to make our brittle. So what I wanna do is turn our burner on as high as it can go. I'm gonna add a little water to the pan, just enough to kinda of coat the bottom of the pan. And I have a little more than a cup of just granulated sugar here. I'm gonna pour that right in the middle. And we're gonna let this crank. I'm gonna cover it with a pan because what's gonna happen here is we want all the water in here to evaporate as well. We don't want it to happen right away. We want the water to come up and the steam to get caught and it's actually gonna drip down the sides of the pan and hopefully keep this from crystallizing on us. So we'll keep an eye on that until it comes to a boil. So if you look over here, I grab the fork and all we're gonna do to make this butter is just mash it all together. Now this is a salted butter and it, uh, the bacon obviously is salty. So once we're all said and done, we wanna taste it, make sure it's not too salty. Make sure it's salty enough too. You might wanna add a little bit of salt to it, but mix it around relatively well. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you want, you can add a little bit of black pepper to it, which is what we'll do. And so what we're making here is what's called a compound butter. We're just adding stuff to butter. If you wanted to add a little bit of maple syrup to this and make it a little sweeter, you could do that. But here's another one of our dishes all done real quick. So here, one of the beauties about being at Hudson Appliance is I said to Donna, I said, hey, I need a food processor. She says, I know a guy. Well, it was just her. She went and got it. So I have a food processor here. So what I'm gonna add to this is our nice crunchy bacon. Put the cover back on and just give it a little whiz. All right, now that that's broken up a bit and you can see there's a fair amount of bacon grease that's on the side there, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and add our salt. This is an awful lot of salt. This is plenty of salt to last you for a while. It's not just for one dish. Go ahead and put our top back on it. And so what we're looking for is that all the grease that's in there kind of gets absorbed by the salt. And we get a pretty fine texture. We're not quite there yet. So I'm gonna buzz this a little bit more. Done. Bacon salt. Now this will last a couple weeks, and this is a great way to just sprinkle a little bacon flavor onto really anything. So there's another one of our dishes done real quick. All right, so one of the seasons we're going to put on our popcorn is a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna go ahead and grate this. I like to use a really, really fine side on the Parmesan cheese. And so we're just gonna go through and make Real fine little pieces, and we don't need all that much, just a little bit more, a few tablespoons, just to toss with our finished popcorn. Perfect. Anytime you get the chance, get real Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese and grate it yourself. It'll make a world of difference. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And you can see my little trick here, a little paper towel underneath the the cutting board so it doesn't slip. All right, now come back over here real quick. Now I'm at a rolling boil. Now I can pull my lid off. I'm gonna let this keep cooking. Looks great, we don't wanna stir it, we don't wanna mess with it at all, we're just gonna let it keep cooking. But over here we're gonna make our bacon wrapped pineapple. Pretty simple concept. Take a piece of bacon, put a pineapple in it, roll it up, just like that. And I have some toothpicks here. And you'll notice I only grabbed a few toothpicks because I don't want to reach into that toothpick jar and start to contaminate all my whole box of toothpicks with raw bacon, especially if I'm not going to use them all. I'm just going to roll these up like so. So I'm gonna do a few more of these. We're gonna take a real quick break for me to wash my hands. We're gonna come back 
We have to be really careful when we're making our brittle here. We don't want to make caramel. We want to watch our sugar so it doesn't burn. But we'll come back, we'll finish that, we'll pour that out, and we'll be just about done. All right, so now you can see in our pot here, I went a little farther than I wanted to. Our sugar started to caramelize. It's just barely turning color. That's okay. It's going to have a little caramel flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little pinch of salt to this because I have peanuts that are very lightly salted. And I'm going to add some of our crunchy bacon right to it and our peanuts. And what I'm looking to do here is just to coat everything in everything. And so this is going to drop the temperature of our sugar really, really quickly. So I have the heat back on just because it cooled down a bit. But now I'm just going to take this. I'm going to pour this whole mass onto our cookie sheet here. And I want to spread it out and scrape as much of this out as I can. Take some of this extra sugar and move it over the top. But there is really quick, really simple bacon peanut brittle. Now, we can move over here and check out the consistency of our jam. Almost all the liquids disappeared. We're going to add our bacon back in. We're just going to let this cook for about a minute or two more. And we are ready for Arthur now, so we're going to give him a call, put all these things together, and do a little taste test. Hey, Arthur. Hi, Matt. How are you? Great. Thanks again for having me back at Hudson Appliance. You're always welcome here. Now, what do we have today? Bacon. Bacon. All about bacon. Oh, cool. Made six different things in this last half hour. It's been action-packed. Okay. So this is a popcorn that we actually popped in bacon fat and then tossed it. Instead of butter, we used a little bit of bacon fat, so it had that flavor. Okay. And some Parmesan cheese. Okay. Bacon peanut brittle. Bacon peanut brittle. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple, basic peanut brittle, but with some very, very crunchy bacon in it. All right. We've got a bacon and onion jam. Real sweet, a little salty. Okay. That's why we have these rolls here. It's actually bacon butter. Bacon butter. Hmm. It's bacon and butter. butter. Yeah. All right. Bacon salt. All right. Which is bacon salt. You know, instead of adding salt and pepper, you could add a little bacon salt if you want a little smokiness to something. All right. And these are a bacon wrapped pineapple that's roasted. Okay. Let's get into it. All right. What are we going for? We'll try the popcorn. Right. And you can really taste the bacon. Oh, yeah. The bacon fat on there. Throw a tomato in there, you got a BLT. A B there you go. <laughs> a BLP with a popcorn, right? Well, yeah. Okay, okay let's have the look. brittle. It's going to be crunchy. Oh, that's good. You know I love sweets. That really does it. And a little bit of salty from the brittle. And then here, I'll take a little bit of this. I'll set you up here if you want. All right. So this is the bacon and onion jam. Phenomenal. That is good. Those onions are really caramelized. Oh, mm. What a good flavor. We use the same piece of bread if you want to try a little bit of the butter here. Yeah. Oh, that's but you good. still so, taste the butter. It's not like that in your face. How do you come up with this? It's unbelievable. <laughs> and this is just bacon salt. You can sprinkle a little on your bread if you want, or just a little. Once again, just another seasoning alternative. Yep. A great way to use a little bit of leftover bacon crumblies that are back in, at the end of the pan. All right. And then last but not least, our bacon wrapped pineapple here. What do you think? Now that's wicked, wicked good. good. 